Recall that when we see the formula for the confidence interval for proportion, which is right here from this section, we can see there's that little z sub alpha over 2 in there. Sub because it's a subscript. It's below the written line. So z alpha over 2. So we want to know how to find that. And that's a perfectly reasonable question. And that's what this page is going to help us with. How to find z alpha over 2 for a particular confidence level. All right, so what's happening here is you have your confidence level in the middle, right? So you can see your confidence levels right there. And then you have alpha because alpha is the complement of that confidence interval. And alpha gets cut in half because you'll have half of alpha over here and the other half of alpha over here. And together, all three portions will add up to 100%. Now remember that this is a Z curve. So that has zero in the middle, right? This is a Z curve that we know and love from um, chapter seven. And it'll have zero in the center. And so therefore, if you find one number, you've actually found the other number because they're mirror images of each other because the graph is symmetric. It's just that the one over on the left will be negative and the one on the right will be positive. All right, so obviously we can use inverse norm, we can use the bottom row of the t-table, we can use stack crunch as well. I'll actually add that in as a third option, which is what I'll use as well. I'll show all three actually, so it'll be fine. All right, so let's do a couple examples. We wanna determine the critical z values in each of these cases, show an accurately labeled graph and include all work and such. Now, if you're thinking this sounds familiar, yes, you've actually already done these problems without even realizing it because we did them in chapter seven. So the middle portion of my curve is 95%. So this middle region in here is worth 0.95, right? So your confidence level. And so then that means that this region over here on the left has to be shaded. And so does this region over here on the right get shaded. And both of those have to have alpha over two. And then the line that cuts it off is a Z. So there's a negative Z alpha over two over here and a positive Z alpha over two over here. Remember we learned this definition in chapter seven when we learned critical values in chapter seven. The subscript is the area to the right, positives on the right, and then negative means areas to the left. All right, so what is alpha? Alpha is one minus your confidence level. Right, that's the word level, sorry about that. All right, so that would be one minus 0.95, which is 0 0.05. I couldn't do it. I had to rewrite that. Okay, so 1 minus your confidence level is 1 minus 0.95, which is 0.05. That's both tails put together. So each tail on its own, in order to appropriately label this and shade it, I have to write alpha over 2, alpha over 2, and that alpha over 2 is equal to 0.05 divided by 2, which is 0 0.025. So that means that this side over here on the left is 0 0.025 and this side over here on the right is 0 0.025. I have appropriately labeled and shaded my curve now. I have the alpha over twos labeled and shaded. I have the Z alpha over twos, right, both of them, put in there and shaded. Well, they're the bars that make that. And I have this center confidence level put in the middle. Now, I want to find these values. Well, hmm. To find that, let me show you some work. <laughs> we can do it a couple ways. So if I use a TI-84, I would use inverse norm. It would be inverse norm, left tail area, which would be 0 0.025, comma 0, comma 1. And if you're in a new calculator, you'd say left. And you can do the same thing in stat crunch. Actually, I'll start out here in stat crunch. So if I go to stat, calculators. Remember, this is the normal curve because the Z curve is a normal curve. So I click that. All right, now we can do this a couple ways, I think. So if I make the middle, if I choose the middle, so the mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and I choose that middle area to be 0.95, enter. And you can see there's one score right there, negative 1.96, and there's the other one, positive 1.96. Nice, huh? <laughs> so so StatCrunch finds both of them automatically. It's really nice like that.
So I just put the area in over here on the right and it found the two values for me. There we go, and I grabbed the TI-84. Um, if you have an old calculator, let me show you that first. Inverse norm, 0 0.025, don't forget the zero in there, zero and one left. Old calculators automatically are left, so you wouldn't actually have the word there. And you can see it's negative 1.96, just like StatCrunch says. If you have a new calculator, like this one is, you can say inverse norm, and then you can tell it 0 0.95, but then tell it it's the center. So choose center, and then if you paste, it'll find both of them just like StatCrunch does. So either way, any of those ways is fine, are fine. Um, there is actually one more way, and it's on your exam notes packet. In your exam notes packet, there's something called a t-table, which if you remember, there was t alpha over 2 coming for us in another section. So don't worry about what the t is yet. We're, we're not there yet. But think about what the area in our tail is. So the area in our right tail is 0 0.025. So if you look at the very, very bottom row, see that letter right there? It's z. So the 0 0.025 column all the way down at the bottom is 1.960. And so you could use the table. You could use the TI-84 calculator, you could use StatCrunch. Either way, one way or another, you're going to get that plus or minus Z alpha over 2, so our two critical values. Oops, I finally killed my whiteout. Hold on. <laughs> Grab another one. All right, so our two critical values, which are plus or minus Z alpha over 2, uh, is plus or minus 1.96. And you don't have to do all three ways. You just pick a way. Um, pick stack crunch or pick your calculator, right? Just just do or use the table, um, whichever one is more convenient for you, and just get used to it. All right, now what if the confidence interval, um, for a confidence interval, if alpha is 0 0.005? So look, they're telling us off the bat that alpha is 0 0.005. That means alpha over 2, which we're going to need for those two sides, is 0 0.0025. And together, those mean that your confidence level in the middle wouldn't be, well, confidence level is 1 minus, I, I messed up writing the word level again. I don't know how I'm managing this. All right, so confidence level, there we go, is 1 minus alpha. Right? They're complements of each other. We remember we highlighted that a couple pages ago. So that means that it's 1 minus 0 0.005, and 1 minus 0 0.005 is point, I'll put it right here, it's 0.995, or 99.5%. That's your confidence level, which is a larger confidence level than it was for part A. 99.5 is bigger than 95. So that means that when I put my lines in, I'm going to put them farther away. My area and my tail is actually quite small. That alpha over 2 is only 0 0.0025, so quite tiny. And that center is quite large. It's 0.995, or 99.5%. So if you're going to write percents, then write percents for all of them. If you're going to write decimals, which is probably the safer bet, then write decimals for all of them. I'd recommend decimals. All right, I'm not going to get full credit yet because I haven't put the negative z alpha over 2 over here and the positive z alpha over 2 over here. It said in the instructions that everything had to be shaded and labeled correctly. And so you do need to shade and label. Shade your tails, label all your areas, label your two z's. Now notice I made that center region larger on this graph than it is on this graph. And that's because I should have more in the middle. It's 99.5%. That's a bigger number than 95%. All right. Now, if you want to find your critical values, I'll show you three ways yet again. <laughs> I'll show you the stat crunch first, because stat crunch is, I think, the easiest. So if I just switch, click, keep it on between, right? So it's between. And I just change this number to 0.995. Enter. There you go. And look at the graph because it's graphing the opposite of what we want. It's graphing the middle part, but that should be pretty much the graph that we're using, right? And you can see how tiny those tails are on the edge. 
and we get plus or minus 2.807. So I actually know the answer right now is plus or minus Z alpha over two is plus or minus 2.807. And that's fine. If you're, if you're done there, you're done there. You don't have to show the TI-84. That's only if you're interested. If you like the table, you go to the point zero zero two five column because that was our alpha over 2. You go to the very, 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 very bottom because you're looking for a Z. And there it is, 2.807. Right? So that's perfectly fine as well. If you want to use the TI-84, I'm going to show the old TI-84 because that's what most people have when they have a TI-84. So it'd be inverse norm, it'd be that 0 0.0025, that alpha over 2, comma 0, comma 1, and then left if you have a newer calculator. Although if you have a newer calculator, you might as well do the centerpiece. So if I have a newer calculator, I can do 0.995 and then center. Like that. If I have an older calculator, I'm stuck with the point. 0, 0, 0,025 because the older calculators automatically are left. And that would give you that number. So really you have multiple ways to be able to find this. Just pick one, right? Um, StatCrunch is very, very simple and straightforward. You can always use StatCrunch and you'll get both your critical values. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. And you'll use those in the formula for the confidence interval, but we'll see that in the next video.